This is Witchbase News for Friday the 12th of May 2023. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week ...as the dust starts to settle from the revelation of the titans we take a deeper dive into everything we know about update 15 so far. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and click the little bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content and if you'd like to help by directly supporting our work you can also join our Patreon. Links to that and everything else are below. As the noise from the cataclysmic arrival of update 15 begins to ease somewhat we're now able to sit back and take a proper look at some of what we gained, what might be bugged and just what other cool stuff commanders are starting to find and investigate in and out of the maelstroms. A feature was quietly added with update 15 that had long been requested by those commanders that favour using keyboard and mouse to control their spaceships in Elite Dangerous. An off asked for feature that has gone unanswered for a good few years by Frontier was the ability to toggle relative mouse mode mid flight. Unless you're an aficionado of mouse and keyboard spaceship control it can be a tough one to understand but essentially relative mouse mode makes the mouse controller behave much more like a joystick and can be particularly advantageous when flying flight assist off manoeuvres. The controls menu always allowed players to switch between relative mouse or regular mode but it couldn't be changed mid flight without visiting the controls menu. Now a keybind can be set to either toggle or press and hold to gain relative mouse control. The adding of the feature unfortunately didn't make it into the patch notes and so it may have gotten missed completely had it not fortunately been spotted by eagle eyed commanders. In case it's of use to you personally you'll find it at the top of the ship control section of the key bindings menu unsurprisingly in the mouse subsection. Another tidy addition to the system map that arrived with update 15 is the stacking of fleet carrier icons, tidy in every sense of the word. As at the time of recording as best we can determine from our own investigations if more than two fleet carriers are present in orbit around a given body they will be stacked into one icon on the system map rather than showing a huge great long line of fleet carriers. The exception being your own fleet carrier which appears to display in individually regardless of how many other fleet carriers are present. Dead useful. I've prefaced this all with as at the time of recording because currently there doesn't appear to be a way to unstack the icons or tell which commanders individually own the potentially tens of fleet carriers that could be present. And whilst it hasn't been explicitly stated that it isn't working as advertised it doesn't feel quite right currently so I wouldn't be too surprised to see a fix winging its way in to clean that up further. Regardless it's a welcome addition and will undoubtedly make community goal systems or those systems that have a secret hidden base or other POI discovered that week slightly less comedic to navigate. Also in case you missed it clicking on a fleet carrier in the system map will now show immediately at a glance what services that carrier currently has active. The recently released caustic sink launcher that absorbs the killer cauliflower's favoured form of human melting and then ejects it safely away via the medium of a right good sciencing has been causing no small degree of confusion since update 15. Prior to the update this week the caustic sinks could be modified by engineering in exactly the same way as heat sinks to give them more ammunition and I do mean exactly the same way as in using the same unlock engineer blueprints and materials. It didn't feel right to be honest and it is looking like it probably wasn't right. Following the update the magical goop remover can no longer be engineered having been moved very firmly into the experimental category. Again this wasn't something that made it into the patch notes at release as an identified fix and at least one commander was advised by FDEV customer support that it was indeed a fix and honestly to me it does feel like a stealth fix rather than a bug. 
If indeed it wasn't designed to be engineerable it remains to be seen what if anything FDEV will do about the sinks that did get engineered before the hammer fell. As we reported last week the new anti Thargoid power restoration mission variant arrived this week and whilst the Thargoid Revenant drone units are proving entertaining and deadly in equal measure the delivery of the mission hasn't been 100% plain sailing. We've seen multiple reports and indeed experienced ourselves incidents where the mission doesn't progress once the power is restored and the settlement buildings now all appear to come pre-installed with a new form of vacuum resistant fire that cannot be extinguished by venting the internal atmosphere. All these issues have been raised and noted and will no doubt get fixed in fairly short order. The missions are not without value however and science on the revenants themselves is ongoing to determine their behaviour and vulnerability. I can say that G5 plasma weapons will ruin their day as will the scorpions missile launcher. When destroyed the revenants can be restocked by a Thargoid scout dropship meaning that if playing alone stealth and guile is almost certainly the best option. Brace yourself for this next one. We've seen some reports of Odyssey's handheld profile analyzer scanner imparting physics into objects that it's used on somewhat like a space leaf blower. Yes really. We've not tried this one ourselves yet but I've linked to Commander Ray Mobulus video on Twitter below that shows this very phenomena in operation at a ground settlement. If you fancy trying this one yourself get in before it gets fixed. I can hear Alec Turner sprinting toward a settlement right now. As we mentioned earlier in the week the propulsion elements materials needed to unlock the pulse neutralizer are not yet dropping from caustic generators and can only be obtained at the moment from killing interceptors or scouts. Frontier have acknowledged that this is not intended behaviour and we think it likely that a fix will arrive in fairly short order for that. And while we're talking scouts ...seamless segue there. It seems that the vulnerable, usually easily plappable scout has been down the gym and has returned in update 15 somewhat amped up, hitting harder and rarely missing a shot. Again FDEV are aware of this and it's under investigation. These issues are by the way one of a number of issues that are being tracked and reported up and down the line between commanders and developers this week by the hard working ever vigilant and omnipresent Sally Morgan Moore. Sally posted yesterday on everything appearing so far together with a recap of commanders experiences, feedback and screenshots. You'll find that post also linked below. It's always the case and indeed is by design that Frontier add things to the game that they don't tell anyone about specifically. In that vein we've started to notice new adverts on the electronic billboards of Elite's many starports. Most notably so far we're seeing ads for Azimuth Biotech popping up everywhere and campaign posters for the major players in the forthcoming federal elections including some for Zach Rackham and Felicia Winters. As you'd expect all mention of the titans was intentionally left out and so everything we're now seeing there is obviously a discovery. In our last video I made mention of the electrical pulse effect that periodically emanates from the colossal alien caustic enshrouded death machines. We had assumed that what we were seeing was the vessel generating the pulse that prevents those without the pulse neutralizer from entering the cloud center in the first place. That is of course an assumption no one really knows and there are now a number of other just as valid theories beginning to surface from it being a healing mechanism to a cooling effect. Whatever the truth of it the effect is quite a thing to experience at close quarters. It takes the form of a huge torus effect very reminiscent of the magnetic field used in nuclear fusion experiments or Tony Stark's arc reactor and it encompasses the entire body of the titan a vessel let's not forget that is measured in multiples of kilometres. Whilst obviously survival at the centre of the maelstroms is not by any stretch of the imagination a given it isn't anywhere near as difficult as our initial investigations would seem to have indicated. Again I'd stress that observation, exploration, discovery and science in this new environment are all still very much ongoing. Our own let's call them experiments would seem to indicate at least that like a lot of things concerning Thargoids heat generation is quite important. 
Running as cool as possible when close to the Titan does seem to allow a commander to remain in its sphere for extended periods. At this point hours at a time are not unusual as long as you remain under around 20% or so. Again I'd stress these are all very early observations. Frontiers Frameshift Live livestream returns on Thursday next week and during the show the team will be talking update 15 with developer guest Curtis. There will also be all new seasonal drops for those watching on Twitch. It's bound to be fascinating stuff. Have you noted any Titan behaviour for yourself? How have you fared at revenant infested settlements and have you seen any new starport ads or propaganda for yourself? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.